Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Measure H Citizens Oversight Committee meeting. Today is Wednesday, March the 15th, 2023. I now call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Committee Member Cerny. Committee Member Dong Carrion. Present. Committee Member Huerta. Committee Member Truffa. Present. For the record, Chair Seely is absent. While the committee welcomes and encourages participation at the committee meetings by the public, matters under the jurisdiction of the committee. Mr. Truffa, uh, we are on presentations number one. Presentations. Number one, I'm sorry. Overview of the Measure H uh, Citizens Oversight Committee. Good evening, members. Um, I just have a brief uh, overview of what Measure H is all about. So the Measure H um, one and a half cent sales uh, transaction and use tax was passed by the voters in 2007 and was added to the municipal code as chapter 3.10. The key phrase in the ordinance states that revenues collected here under shall supplement rather than supplant um, existing expenditures for public safety. This means that Measure H funds cannot be used in place of general funds, but that they must be used in addition to general funds. There is an expenditure plan attached to the ordinance that may be amended by the city council as long as funds are utilized for police and fire protection services. Section 3.1.160 of the Municipal Code established the Oversight Committee, and the purpose and jurisdiction of the committee is to review expenditures of the revenue collected to determine whether such funds or expended for the purposes specified. The section also states that the committee shall meet semi-annually or as otherwise provided and that uh, Rosenberg's rules of order are followed. And that concludes my brief overview. Thank you. Thank you. Citizens communication, while the committee welcomes and encourages participation at the committee meetings by the public, matters under the jurisdiction of the committee and not on the posted agenda uh, may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the committee from taking action on any matter not on the posted agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the committee. Are there Zoom comments? I do not see any hands raised on Zoom, but I do believe we had two blue cards from members of the public. First will be Holly Hall. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, if, if I may, due to the sake of time and the and to follow the flow of our presentation, I prefer Mr. Roth go first, if that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me uh, first, so you folks know who I am, give me, let me give you a little uh, history of myself. My name, of course, is Louis Rollo, and for those of you who don't know me, let me inform you of my professional history. I was a resident of Ceres for 63 years, and three years ago, I moved to an independent apartment at Samaritan Village in Houston. After spending 21 years with the Ceres Police Department, I retired as a police commander. I then became a teacher and assistant principal at Ceres High School retired in 2001. In 1987, I was elected to the Siri City Council and then was elected three times after that as mayor of Ceres. I also spent short periods of times as a council member. After an extensive background investigation, then governor of California, Gray Davis, appointed me to the California Redevelopment Committee. My education includes three college degrees 
the highest being a master's degree in education. I am also a 1982 graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia. I offer that information so I'm not confused with someone who complains at every council meeting or meeting such as this and becomes a PIA. Now, let me speak with my document. I'm gonna mention a, a term that's called CARE. And before I begin reading my document, I will explain that CARE stands for Citizen Advocate Responsible Entity. We've been in existence for about a little over three years. CARE has made investigations into the operations of the city of Ceres. We have filed documents with the Stanislaus County Grand Jury in April of 2021, most of which are being currently investigated. Our latest filing was last month with the Stanislaus County Grand Jury. But when you hear me talk about CARE, it's a group of, of concerned citizens from the city of Ceres. So let me begin. Uh, Mr. You're the chairman tonight? Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'm sure you're aware that the citizens of the series voted in 2007 to implement a public safety ordinance known as Major H. At the time of the vote, certain parameters were included in the ordinance that would safeguard the expenditures that were secured by a tax levied against the residents of Ceres. Two words in the City of Ceres Ordinance 2007-975, supplement and supplant, clearly stand out as to how the newly enacted tax will be dispersed by our city leaders. The words described can be found in section 3.10.150 of City Ordinance 2007-975. Members of Major H's Oversight Committee should be very familiar, not only with the two mentioned words, but with all the information contained in said ordinance. If the members of the committee are to be effective in their decisions of oversight, they must understand what the city leaders have or want to propose. Committee members should understand that appointment to a committee by the council does not absolve them of any liability should their decisions be clearly in opposition to the policy voted in the affirmative by the voters of Ceres. Legal term for that is vicarious liability. You can look that up in the dictionary. As executive consultant to the Ceres group known as CARE, I receive all information and complaints from citizens who live in Ceres. Just recently, CARE received a complaint from the about the city of city using Major H funds to pay part of the rent for the Modesto Fire Department service. I was aware the city of Ceres was paying a rental fee for the fire service from the city of Modesto, but did not know the funds, some of the funds were coming from Major H. After checking the documents in my possession, I discovered the city of Ceres was taking in excess of $150,000 a month from the city, uh, from the Major H Fund to help the city pay rent for the fire service to the city of Modesto. Clearly, this is a violation of city ordinance 2007-975, which in no way mentions that encumbrance of funds to be paid to any entity for services rendered. It is the belief of care the city of cities did not have a full understanding of the obligation they had entered into with the city of Modesto or rental of their fire service. Care further believes research by the city of Ceres into renting fire service from the city of Modesto was cursory at best and did not take into account the volatile effect of funds received by the city from various business accounts. It is further the belief of care the city of Ceres encumbered and spent funds not authorized by the vote of the people at the outset of Mazer H and is in violation of city ordinance 2007-975. This may be construed as an attempt to defraud the city of Ceres and misuse of public funds. Air understands the Mazer H committee is an advisory group 
which is charged as an oversight group to report possible misuse of H from Major H and not merely a rubber stamp to approve that which only staff believes is in accordance with the vote of the people. In conclusion, I would like to say CARE is not making any accusation against any person elected or otherwise who holds a leadership position within the city of Sirius. To that end, CARE has compiled a certain amount of documents and is prepared to submit those articles to the appropriate investigative authority for their analysis. And if discovered something that's found to be amiss, the legal authority will act accordingly. CARE will be meeting soon to determine what local or state legal authority will be contacted to review this matter. That is the end of my comments relative to Major H. We will be meeting with the care group to discuss this further and determine what agency, uh, possibly the DA or the Attorney General, we will be filing with. If anyone from the city has any questions, two people I would trust that I would talk to would be Council Member James Casey and your newly seated member, uh, Randy Sturney. So if anybody from the city besides those two uh, want to ask me questions, you can tell them don't waste their time because I won't talk to them. Thank you very much. Mr. Rall, I have a question. Can you provide a written copy of your statement? Did you provide a copy of your statement to staff? You have an extra copy of your statement. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Stuff getting off. Get out of the chair. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Holly Hall. I'm a citizen of Ceres. I've been a citizen of Ceres around about uh, since 1995. I'm a retired uh, administrative sergeant with the Ceres Police Department. I work with uh, two chiefs, several city managers, a mayor, doing internal investigations, et cetera, et cetera. I am a member of CARE. CARE does not have a particular chairman. We all are together. Give you a little bit of background for those who don't understand Measure H or how I understand Measure H. Back in uh, 2006, I was part of the uh, the core group of uh, putting care or the measure H together. And uh, I wasn't directly on the committee, but I did some investigations, advisory, et cetera. And I would like to tell you when I was working as a police officer then, to get measure H even approved by the citizens, we went and knocked on probably over 200 residents talked to over 200 people. And at that time, nobody wanted to pay extra taxes in the city of Ceres. In fact, with my integrity, along with other firefighters and police officers, we actually had to beg our citizens to vote for Measure H. It was very, very difficult to get Measure H approved during those years past. I'm not going to piggyback on what Mr. Rollo said with his uh, professionalism and things of that nature. I'm sure you understand what he has said so far. But I can only ask you to go back as a group and really read Measure H and see what the intent was about Measure H to get that passed through the citizens of Ceres. Like I stated, it was very, very difficult. In fact, I was told by a mayor and a 
few council members at that time, you are crazy. You're not going to get that measure passed. Nobody wants to pay extra taxes. And I said, let me take it on. So we took it on as a group and we finally got Measure H passed. I submit to this committee with your intelligence and your knowledge of what's going on with Measure H that you really read Measure H. Don't read between the lines because Measure H was designed by the citizens to hire full-time sworn employees such as police and fire to hire positions, not to buy fire trucks, not to buy police cars, to hire personnel, sworn personnel. So I want you to take that in consideration and really study it. With that in mind, I can answer any questions that you prefer, but I would leave you with this statement. Look at the word of the law and the spirit of the law and see what Measure H is all about, because the CARE Committee does not agree with the process that's being taken place of the expenditures being taken out of Measure H. So with that, I... Uh, submit to you that you really study it, do your homework, and get the real intent of Measure H. Thank you very much. If there's any questions, I'll... I, I do have a question for you, Mr. Hall. Um, I, too, was campaigning back in 2006 and 2007 for the passage of Measure H. I Correct me if I'm not wrong. Um, it seems to me like one of the main selling points to get the vote in this community to pass Measure H is that we are gonna form a street crimes unit to go after the drugs and gangs in this community that were causing a large proportion of the criminality that was occurring in this community. Is that true or not true? Not to my knowledge. Uh, everything I had to do with Measure H, trying to sell the voters to vote for Measure H, was to be able to use the extra funding to hire sworn personnel, and that was, 50% fire, 50% police. That's the first time I heard that. Great, thank you. Mr. Hall, yes. I have a question. Um, do you currently know how many police officers are on this serious police department? At this point in time, I have no idea. Okay, thank you. I don't know how many firefighters even, so. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, folks. No, I believe we're supposed to talk about Zoom comments. I do not see any hands raised on Zoom. There's one more comment in the public. I just want to say thank you to the two individuals tonight that were sworn in. I appreciate you applying. It was a great set of candidates, and it's nice to see smiling faces up there that are willing to do the hard work that needs to go in. As you know, this is a very controversial and very important position. Public safety is key to our city, and I appreciate you both, and I love seeing you smiling faces up there, even the ones that were sworn in prior to you. Thank you. Can you state your name for the record, please? I thought everyone knew me. I'm sorry. Rosalinda Vieira. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if I can make a statement, man, um, we do the easy work. It's you folks that are going to be doing the hard work. We rely on you guys too. So. It's all all team. we do is advise. Right. It's the teamwork though. So Thank I appreciate you guys stepping forward and making the commitment. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you. Yeah. Any public comments through email? We have not. Yes, that the public comment period is now. 
We can move on to appointments, the appointment of a vice chair. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion mm -hmm. that uh, Vince, I'd like to nominate you as the vice chair. Uh, you're doing such a great job tonight in the presence of Mr. Steely, who is the chair, correct? Uh, so I would nominate you as our vice chair. Thank you so much, and I will certainly accept that. I make a, mo a second. I'll second that. Roll call. Okay. Okay. Committee member Cerny. Aye. Yes. Committee member Don Carrion. Yes. Committee member Huerta. Yes. Committee member Treffa. Certainly. Motion passes four zero. Yeah, I'd like to move on to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual member or a public for a special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendations of staff will be accepted and acted upon by a roll call vote. Is there anyone from the community that would like a consent item pulled for further discussion? None. Is there anyone in the public that would like a consent item pulled for further discussion? Eric, reporting report on uh, postings. Agenda. I believe we need a motion to accept the consent calendar. We one motion can take care of all. Correct? A motion and a second. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and approve the consent calendar. I'll second that. Okay. Committee member Cerny. Yes. Committee member Dong Carrion. Yes. Committee member Huerta. Yes. Committee member Treffa? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. We do none reports, verbal report from. Uh... Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Perry. I'm a police captain at the Sirius Police Department filling in for Chief Collins tonight. Uh, tonight I'm prepared to speak with you about uh, some of our major Measure H uh, purchases from 2022-23 uh, fiscal year uh, budget. Uh, so far, um, out of Measure H uh, expenditures, we purchased um, uh, a program called Cellhawk, which was $5,000 purchase. It's got a $5,000 annual cost. And it's a, um, a product that allows us to um, uh, absorb data from cell phones during investigations where we're uh, uh, extracting data out of cell phones. It's a, a cell phone extraction data, essentially. Uh, and then we also purchased uh, for $11,000 uh, a license um, from a company called Grayshift. And the license uh, uh, product is called Graykey. And again, it's another um, it, it, it's another cell phone uh, extraction, um, but it's the computer end of things that allows us to get the data from the phone onto the computer and then run it through an analyzation, essentially. Uh, these days, a lot of crimes and criminals have a lot of evidence that are uh, obtained on cell phones. And uh, in a lot of cases, when we get these cell phones, we need to be able to extract the data and analyze that data off of cell phones uh, in our cases. So these top, the, the, the first two uh, items that I mentioned are related to that cell phone extraction uh, data, essentially. Um, again, $5,000 for Cellhawk for the first one and $11,000 uh, for gray, uh, gray key license. Uh, Can I interrupt you for just sure. a second, please? No. We're following along with this budget report, correct here? 
I don't um, find what he's referring to. Yeah, what you're looking at um, was part of um, number six. So I, I believe his is just a verbal report. You may not have any. But what happened last year? Yeah. So it's not under these new numbers? Right. No, it wouldn't be in there. Uh, yeah, I'm just giving you a highlight of some of the big expenses that we've done essentially out of Measure H. Um, in your yeah, in your paperwork, you may have a more detailed break a, a breakdown of some of the smaller stuff as well. Um, one of the other products um, uh, we have forty two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars earmarked um, for um, Motorola Vigilant uh, license plate readers technology. Um, we have not made that purchase yet, um, but it is slated to. Um, to make that purchase. Um, at this time, it'll probably be in the form of license plate readers on our patrol vehicles. We currently have three vehicles outfitted already, and we'll probably outfit about another three more with that, with that money. Um, and again, that's technology that when we're driving around, it allows us to receive hits on license plates related to stolen vehicles or other crimes that have been entered into the system. Uh, I mean, it could be a murder suspect or something like that. Um, and it, it's pretty neat technology. That number 42250 is on this uh, 2023 OA. Yep. Um, and then uh, lastly, here um, under public safety equipment, uh, we purchased uh, Faro uh, traffic collision uh, scanning software uh, in the form of $50,000. Um, essentially, what this is, is uh, if we have a major traffic collision like a fatal, um, it is a a uh, device essentially that can be set up on a tripod. You press a button, it scans the entire scene uh, in 360 degree view. And then we take it back to the, to the office, plug it into a computer and it spits it out in a mapping form for us with precise uh, measurements and so on uh, for all the evidence uh, essentially in real time. So it takes the time away from the old school method of our officers using measuring tapes and marking chalk and things like that. Uh, the neat thing about the Faro device, although it's a traffic collision device, it can also be used in crime scene investigations indoors as well. So let's just say we went to a house and had a homicide. We can set this thing up into the room that the homicide occurred in, and it will scan that entire room as well to include every single thing in that room, couches, beds, the body, you name it. Uh, so we made that purchase already, $50,000. Uh, we have a pending purchase of $10,000 uh, of replacement rifles uh, for our patrol officers. Um, some of our rifles are getting out of date and are no longer serviceable, and we're repurchasing uh, new patrol rifles uh, for the officers. Uh, $10,000 purchases for rifles, and that purchase is pending. The old one. Uh, they get surplused. Yeah, usually bought uh, as a buyback uh, from a gun man or a, a store that we contract with. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, lastly, we purchased uh, uh, $27,000 for new SWAT vest uh, for the SWAT team. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that uh, concludes my report. Uh, are there any questions? The license for the uh, phones. Yep. That's not an unlimited license, is it? Correct. It, it is not. Um, and the first one, the 5000 for the Cellhawk, uh, that's an annual cost, so it's 5000 a year. Is that enough, I guess? I'm sorry to cut you off, oh. but is that enough? To uh, oh, oh, yeah. Access? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. And then the gray, uh, the gray shift license, which is $11,000. It gives us a license to analyze something like, I, I want to say something like seven phones or something like that, um, which we might use more, um, but we're starting with that um, as a starting point for us. Um, so if we, if we need more later, then we, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, that's going to be a starting point for us. The reader. Yes. Why didn't we put them on? Uh, we're currently working on another big project um, that we're going to present to council for that out of ARPA spending, uh, but that is something in the works in the tune of several hundred thousand dollars. We'll be able to read a lot more licenses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that project is, 
is going to be slated to have the council uh, city council review um, to essentially put license plate readers at all of our major intersections throughout the city. But again, in the tune of several hundred thousand dollars. So we're looking at um, requesting ARPA spending for that. And see if the council helps us out with that. And you already found a vendor for the rifles that you want to get rid of? Yes, sir. Yeah, we use a, a LC Action. Uh, it's a vendor we've been using for years. I'm assuming SWAT vests must have just gone out of date. They do. Right. Yep. And then, of course, their technology gets better as well. You know, they make them lighter and, you know, able to stop bigger bullets and such. So, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Regarding the ALPR, which vendors are you reaching out to um, to get an idea of like how much it's going to cost? And Regarding the what? The, the AL uh, automatic license plate oh, reader. The license plate readers. Yeah. So uh, we use a company called Vigilant. Um, they're they're actually they recently were purchased by Motorola, yeah. um, and the reason why we use them is because we already have some of their products. There's several other LPR platforms that are out there, but when you start getting into multiple platforms, then you got to have multiple computer screens. You got to learn multiple platforms and things like that. Um, Motorola slash Vigilant is one of the only LPR companies out there that actually does what they call commercial data, meaning that they actually have license plate readers on like garbage trucks and taxi cabs and Uber cars and Lyft vehicles all across the country. And we have access to that data. So that's very helpful for us. So the, the license plate reader itself is a, an actual small portion of the technology to be able to, to read the license plates. It's the backbone data is what's actually key for us in law enforcement, because that's where we're going to make our investigations. So, for example, if I if we subscribe to a license plate reader company that, let's just say, uh, has majority of their data in Los Angeles. Well, that might not help us very much because our crooks aren't committing a homicide here and then maybe driving to Los Angeles, you know, but they may be committing a homicide here and then driving over to the Bay Area. So I want to have that backbone technology that has license plate readers that can track them in a lot of the main places that our crooks are going to go to so we can build our cases that way. And we've already built a lot of cases that way uh, where we've had crimes that have been committed right here in series, and then we've followed them on license plate uh, uh, reader data, I mean, even all the way to their houses in other cities. So their cell phones. absolutely. I have a question. Yes. Um, can you explain how it would work from commercial vehicles? Yeah, certainly. So the commercial vehicles, essentially all they do is read the license plates. So again, things like garbage trucks, school buses, city buses that are driving around, the cameras are constantly reading all of these plates and all of those plates end up getting dumped into a database. So again, if we have crooks that are driving around, the probability of one of these things that have read those license plates that we're looking for, or it's a, it's a it's better, you know, um, the, the more readers you have out there reading the plates, the more data that gets dumped into the database, which we have access to. Uh, so these public vehicles have cameras. Uh, not not all, but, but many, read? many do. Okay. Yeah, a lot a lot of them do. Not not all, but yeah, a lot of companies do. And Vigilant is one of the only companies that um, contracts with commercial and, and keeps a commercial database that we get access to, okay. which is pretty nice. Um, certainly can't quote me, but uh, there's a lot of police agencies all over the state of California that have Vigilant, Motorola, along with across the country which literally gives us access to millions and millions and millions of license plates every day, millions every day. Um, so it's pretty, I mean, we, you really could commit a crime here and that criminal can drive all the way to Florida and we could track that car that, that entire way. Having access to that data, is it because of using that vendor? Kind of like, what if you went with a different vendor, like the Flock system, you know, would you be able to have access to the same type of data or is it because yeah. vigilant to, yeah, so we would have access to Flock's data. Okay. Yeah, so, and again, Flock doesn't do commercial data and they don't have as many agencies that are up on their program Vigilant does. So we essentially would not have as much access to the data if we used Flock versus using Vigilant. Yeah. I have a question about the line. It might be more appropriate for staff. Um, 
this is my third time on the committee, but I haven't been on the committee for a while. Um, I'm going to have to get up to speed on a few things. And your numbering system on the on these reports are kind of new to what, compared to what I'm used to in the past. Um, and this one item here for the salaries, how many police officers are we currently paying out of Measure H? So I have this 653,340 number here. How many uh, police officers are we currently? Uh, for this year, we're paying for 10. And that retirement charge, 458000 on the 653000 that is for just those 10 officers. Yes, right? all of these charges are just for those 10 officers. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on getting more any, uh, any more LPRs for the police vehicles or anything like that? Because you indicated it free. I know that in looking at the balance at the end of year 2022 there's a lot of money available and have, has that been discussed or anything like that yeah so um we plan on outfitting a few more cars probably with uh, the spending that we have here and then again in that other plan that we plan to submit through arpa spending that plan will also entail a few more cars as well which uh, by the time it's all said and done we'll probably have about nine or ten cars done which that's pretty good since our fleet, I want to say is about 15. So almost an LPR on every car. But by then we'll also have an LPR at every intersection. Uh, we currently have uh, one speed trailer, the little radar trailers that you see out. One of those actually has an LPR on it. We just got one of those. Um, the other plan calls for, I want to say one more of those, along with uh, four other portable LPR cameras that we can move around the city as we deem fit. They could just be mounted on poles and they run off of battery chargers. For example, the Walmart parking lot. Reader on it. Correct. Might possibly. Yeah. So, you know, if we have an area that we're experiencing some high crime or something like that, we can just go find the nearest pole, put up uh, one of the portable LPRs and let it sit out there for maybe a couple of weeks or something like that and see what we gather off of it and then move it to the next location. So does all of the radar trailers have cameras on them or is it certain ones? Yeah, just, only the one for now. There's only just one, but only just one that has an LPR on it for now. Yeah, that's our only one. I don't have it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a good example would be like that cell hawk uh, that I just told you about. Um, again for the investigations of like the cell phones and stuff that's has an annual um sub subscription cost to it of five thousand a year so that something like that is what we would use measure h money for thank you i have a question for staff in all the years that i was on measure h beginning with the very first committee on like i said this is my third appointment we've always had council here we had any question have the lawyer, the city's lawyer here to answer those questions. The council here, I don't see the uh, fire chief. Have things changed? The fire chief. Um, the fire chief is on Zoom. Oh, okay. The assistant fire chief. I'm here. Legal. Okay. We have Rosa here too, our new elected council member. Well, she's, her, 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 her legal degree isn't equivalent to the guy that used to sit down there. But, uh, <laughs> So do we do have a council? We, we do not. Do not, no. The past reason? couple meetings, we didn't either. I can definitely look into that and get back to you. We always used to have. I want to thank the captain for being the chief uh, traffic officer. Hi, this is Chief Wise. Were you trying to call me? I'm sorry if, if you broke broke up. 
Yes. Uh, good evening. This is Chief Wise. I'm the assistant chief with the Modesto Fire Department, and I'm the former series fire chief. Uh, I was just going to update you on three things this evening, uh, give you a, a brief department update, an update on what <clears throat> some of the equipment that we purchased also from Measure H. And then I was just going to give you um, a storm update and the current uh, situation with our, our rivers and the potential flooding. Um, so since our last meeting, really one of the biggest uh, things that we've accomplished at the fire department is we have created a incident management team. And it's a very similar to emergency operations center, but it's more of an operational team that is all hazard for any type of hazard, whether it's, it's fire, um, civil unrest, um, storms, earthquakes. This team can be assembled to help out any of our jurisdictions. And we're doing this in conjunction with the state, with uh, the TCU CAL FIRE unit. And so it's a basically um, a team that can go in and help mitigate any situation and support the local jurisdiction. So currently we have almost 100 members on the team, but a deployment of the team is, is generally a, a, a minimum of, of 11 members. And they go in and they help the, the jurisdiction. They're not there to take over the incident. They're there to assist and mitigate the, the, uh, the incident. So we're really happy with that. It's a type three all risk team and it's really just getting off the ground, but we've already, uh, with the last storm event in January, we that was the first time the team actually got implemented as a whole team. So very excited about that and very excited about how it's gonna help all our jurisdictions. Um, we continue uh, at our training center out on Service Road, which is a series training center. Um, we continue with our fire academies. We just completed another academy a few months ago. Um, we did two last year, they're 14 week fire academies. Therefore, the Modesto Fire Department, Stanislaus Consolidated, and the city of Turlock. And we have had some members in the past from Patterson go through that academy. So very excited about our training center. And I always offer it up. I'll take anybody who wants to. I'll take them on a tour of our training center. And I know a few of you have taken me up on that. Um, some of the equipment that we purchased over the last year, um, we did purchase a new water rescue boat, but that was from a prior year budget. But what came out of last year's Measure H, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, um, was uh, the equipment needed for that rescue boat, like PFDs, uh, wetsuits, dry suits for the personnel to respond to water rescues. Um, a major uh, replacement of what we call an SCBA compressor and fill station. Um, at Station One downtown, we replaced that uh, the, in this last uh, November, December. So that's what we use to fill up our bottles. We fill them up with clean air that we take into fires. So it's a SCBA compression fill station. Um, all our stations are are equipped with gym equipment. So we did use some Measure H funding to help pay for new gym equipment that was uh, very very outdated. So that was greatly appreciated and helped keep our guys healthy. Uh, we also purchased some portable radios out of Measure H. And the only other portion that comes out of Measure H for the fire department, um, as far as equipment goes, is to help pay for the fire engine loan. And that's it on the equipment for Measure H. Uh, current update with the storms, uh, we Pretty lucky with this last storm. It wasn't as bad as, as anticipated. Our EOC, which we are supporting at the county, is actually downgrading from a, a level one to a level three, which that's great. However, the Tuolumne and the Merced rivers will remain at flood stage probably for the next couple of weeks. So um, our concerns moving forward is really our levee system. Um, it's been severely saturated for the last few months, and we're just hoping that it can hold in place. So we're going to continue to monitor that, uh, the, this situation, and if needed, we, we can deploy our IMT at any time for any type of situation. With that, that concludes my reports and uh, open for any questions. 
Mm -hmm. Like we have no questions for you, Chief. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. You're Chief. welcome. How many firefighters do you think are paid these days, Rach? Well, since it's now a contract, we we, we don't have like a set okay. number of firefighters. Okay, so these numbers here in this report, I know it's part of the year. Well, hold on to that question. Is that what the variance is in looking at uh, page 11? Uh, when it's going over the expenditures were payroll, there was a variance of $844,000 that was left over. Was that originally bud budgeted for firefighters, right? But then once when it was contracted out, um, it looks like contractual services exceeded by 720,000. Would that be it? Would it be related to that right there? Are you looking at the audit? Is that the, the audit report? Yes. Okay. So that was for twenty two. Yeah. Um the the we had I believe two months of actual salary costs to pay for. Um no, we had more than that. Um because we had a firefighter that stayed on with us for a long term. So we did have some salary costs in that fiscal year, uh, but not as much as we had anticipated. Are we paying for any Modesto department to measure? No, age? we are not. No, we still own all of the fire stations. The city of Ceres does. We're not paying for anything in the city of Modesto. No. Does that include PECOS? Yes, it does. That is ours. What was that transfer done for the 152,000? That's um, part of the um, the loan for the fire apparatus that we purchased. The what? The fire uh, engine that we had to purchase. On the fire training academy, these other agencies that the chief was talking about go through that academy. They pay to go through that academy. Yeah, I can answer that, Leticia. Like Turlock Fire, do, do that, other agencies pay to go through that academy or be just hosted? Yeah, I can answer that question for you. Okay. Um, so the training is part of a training MOU, and it was a, originally started in 2019 as a three-year agreement back when we had the series fire department. And it was a partnership with other departments to provide training. And so that station was unoccupied and unstaffed at the time. And Ceres had used it for its training center and it had plans um, that were partially completed for props and different things for Ceres firefighters to use. <laughs> uh, we didn't have the budget to have a training officer or a full-time training officer. We had a shift training officer who was actually a, an engine captain. So we we worked with the Modesto Fire Department, the Stanislaus Consolidated Fire Department, and at the time, the Salida Fire Department, and we created a training MOU where each partner would contribute to the training division. So the city of Ceres contributed the facility while the other agencies contributed personnel, full-time personnel to the training center. So the full-time personnel that work at the training center that provide the training, are employees of the other agencies. And that is their payment is by providing that. And series payment is providing the, or contribution I should say, is providing the facility. Which is really now a Modesto facility, right? Well, it, it's it's a city of series facility. Right, um, Modesto it's just, runs it. Yes, correct. And then they just re-renovated and uh, completed uh, new work on their 
training facility up by uh, Carpenter and uh, Blue Gump. There's been some work done there, but that's that's um, ran by the college. the questions of the chief. Move for adjournment. Anything else for the order? One, one thing, can we pass along to the council that at least me personally, I'd feel much more comfortable if we had legal representation here. I know the council does at their meetings. We always used to in the past without the presence of a uh, City attorney here for me personally. Yeah, so we we will we'll look into that. I do have a question. Um, uh, you said that the training facility in Modesto is run by Modesto Junior College. Um, uh, do you know if Measure H funds um, contribute to any of that or? Um, is it just from the the college? Yeah, no, no Measure H funds go to the the. It's called the Regional Fire Training Center. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think we're adjourned.